Hey, this is Mike Errico, and this is your introduction to percussive acoustic guitar. Um, I guess what you could say I've been doing for quite a while, I don't really have a name for it. Percussive acoustic guitar is pretty good. Um, it's sort of like, I think of it as a little pocket band, if you want to think a bit about it like that. Um, let me just start off by telling you what this is not. This is not like how to be a Michael Hedges or how to play Bohemian Rhapsody. Um, on the acoustic guitar all the way through and, and get you know, 7 million views on YouTube or something like that. I love that stuff. I think it's really cool. It's not what I do, and it's not why I come to the acoustic guitar. Um, I wanted to be a drummer when I was a kid, and my parents said that drumming was too loud. So I blame this on my parents. We all blame everything on our parents. Why not this? Um, but essentially what a guitar is, is a drum. I mean, it's a drum with strings on it. And uh, if, especially a banjo. If you think about a banjo, it's really like a snare drum. It uses a snare drum head, literally. It doesn't have the snare, so maybe it's a rototom with, uh, with strings on it. Um, that's where the guitar originated. Um, so putting those two ideas against, uh, against each other, my parents not allowing me to play the drums, me finding out how to play the drums on the guitar, you come to something that I put together, which is basically an approximation of a band. Um, I should also mention poverty, of course. I was unable to afford a band and a lot of guitar players, particularly um, uh, acoustic soloists can't afford a band. Um, it's very hard to carry a band, especially on the road. Um, so what I tried to do is approximate a band, not substitute for a band, but to approximate a band, and then to um, have the guitar itself conform to my uh, approximation, basically. So the first thing I want to do is break the guitar apart into drum pieces, OK? So uh, the first part's pretty, pretty obvious, the kick drum. The kick drum will basically be where I put it is uh, is the bottom three strings of the uh, of of the guitar over by the bridge. Um, this works particularly well in a live setting um, because of the uh, especially if you have a line out, which most guitars do. Um, especially if you're playing live, I'm assuming that you have uh, a line out. Um, it's important in a live setting to ask the sound man to push the bass response a little bit um, so that you really get the sense of a kick. And sometimes you really have to explain to a sound man, I know it looks like a guitar, but it's actually an abstracted pocket band that's approximating uh, a guitar. It, it just only looks like uh, um, a guitar to you. But I want the kick drum on the guitar to be a little bit heavier is basically what you kind of have to say. So there's your, your kick drum. The uh, great thing about it also is that uh, the kick and the bass will always be locked. We'll get back to that later. OK, so there's your kick. Snare. There are like basically five snares uh, that, you can, that I use. Uh, one is closest um, in, in this area. And I use it a lot of different ways. Um, I, I take the uh, bone part of the other side of the knuckle, and I hit if I want it to really to crack. Um, it really has that bone on wood sound because guess what? It's bone on wood. Um, if if uh, it's a problem or if it if it's, uh, sounds too uh, sharp to you, I use the pad of my finger and I can, I can get it to a much softer place. Now, um, stopping for a second, Recording these kind of things is difficult because the drums, if you do any recording, you know the drums have a transient that's very sharp. Now by a transient, I mean that when a snare hits, the sound wave looks like a huge spike and then it drifts pretty quickly. That's called decay. So um, guitar will have that. If you pick a string with a pick, the transient is also very spiky and then it decays pretty quickly. But if you have a volume pedal and you have it all the way down, play a chord and then bring the volume pedal in, 
you're basically what you're doing is erasing the transient entirely. So and you'll see that sound wave actually goes from zero and then grows as you depress the volume pedal. Drums have the same thing, only more extreme. So um, how you're going to use the kick drum and how you're going to use the snare is going to uh, affect um, your recording. A lot of recording equipment will uh, peak and, and it'll sound crappy and, and, and all of that. So what you want to do is figure out how to compress um, these different drum parts, the, just the way an audio engineer does for an actual drum. One way to do that is when you have, uh, you know, you have your miking out here, acoustic miking, also you can have that line out of your, the body of your instrument. I use a Fishman blender, which is a mix of a, of a microphone and the uh, piezo pickup. Um, it will run out of the guitar and then you can actually crush it if you want. I mean, you can, you can push down that transient and then bring it up a little bit in the mix um, and, and you can balance out the sound. Balancing is difficult uh, for this kind of thing. So those are, those are ways I get around it. Anyway, so that, that's only one snare. So that's one. The second is closer to the sound hole. It has more of a, you get more of the sound of the body. Um, a third I actually use only when the guitar is upright and it's over here. And that one I kind of use as an, I call it the emergency snare because uh, if that happens if my right hand is, uh, is, is busy doing whatever it's doing, probably arpeggiating um, or something. So I will bring the, I'll bring my hand around actually literally and, and grab the snare here. That's one, two, three. Four is um, if I'm in the middle of an arrangement, I will use the harmonics and the, the hit of the harmonics. You'll actually also get the sound, uh, the, 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 the transient of, uh, of a snare, and you won't interrupt whatever pattern you're in. The, uh, that's one, two, three, four. The fifth one is sort of like, for fun kind of thing. It's over, it's over here. So you could actually, you know, use these things in combination, but you know it's there. Um, so there are your, your different snares. And just as a sidebar, no one ever uses it. I've never used it. I don't know if anyone ever uses it, but uh, you have a vibra slap if you're, if you're so inclined. It's a terrible vibra slap. Anyway. If you're into uh, spaghetti western, whatever, um, rattlesnakes, uh, you know, in the desert and things like that. I don't know. I don't know what you're playing, frankly, but I'd love to hear it. Um, so there are hi hats. There's a hi hat, sort of. Uh, it's close. Again, this is all of it is an approximation of of a drum kit. So you know, it's uh, it's gonna it'll function as a as a hi hat if you want it. Um, and uh, you know, for the, uh, for you, uh, <laughs> I don't know who you. I don't know. It it, it depends on who you are, or whatever. I, I use this as well. Uh, you can use it as a uh, as a vinyl scratch. You know, uh, you know. So you can you can use this in any in any way you want. So there you have kick, snare, hi hat. Vibra slap for no reason and vinyl scratch, um, and uh, you put them together, and uh, and it's a short trip at that point to just playing your kit. So yeah, I, so and now I I'm also doing a couple things I hadn't mentioned. One is. Instead of just hitting it once, I'll, I'll hit my kick drum twice, right? Um, snare, you can flam if you, if you want that. I know that that's actually a, a, a keystroke in, uh, in most uh, drum packages on synthesizers and uh, in Pro Tools and everything else. So if you want that kind of thing, um, 
there's also, uh, I'm trying not to use the strings yet, but uh, there are all of those things. And it's a quick trip at this point to going into loop pedals if you want to do anything like that. So you have like a clear and well EQ'd uh, kit that you can put into a loop pedal and let run, um, which then, as you know, I'm sure, opens the guitar back up because you don't have to do any of this stuff, and now you can, you can lay any kind of work on top of it. Um, playing the guitar a little bit, um, just using a, one, a single chord, we'll use this. Um, the other three fingers on your left hand are available, and uh, they can be used sort of as grace notes for the snare, sort of like as a little bit of, a little bit of chatter. Um, again, to try to approximate a groove as much as possible, so I'm just utterly exaggerating it just, for, just so you see it happening. So, sorry. <laughs> So, uh, I, again, I'm, I'm exaggerating these things so that, so that you can see them. Um, and you have, now you have all these ideas and you can uh, bring them into what I think is the most important part about the acoustic guitar, which is having a bed and a setting for songwriting, for what you can think of as the seventh string if you want, or if you're playing a seventh string, it's the eighth string, and that is your voice. The different things that you can do with your voice. Once you have a groove happening, you can, now you're available to do anything with your voice, including talking, which I'm doing right now, singing, of course, anything with vocals. If you're not a vocalist, um, whistling has become really big again all of a sudden. Andrew Bird um, has, has taken whistling <laughs> to new levels, I guess. He's taken whistling into looping, and then he has choruses of whistling that's go that are going on. So if you feel self-conscious about your voice, whistling is a possibility. A friend of mine, Raul Midon, has uh, a thing he does where he approximates a trumpet. You've probably seen it. If you go on YouTube, you'll absolutely see. Uh, Raoul doing this stuff um, and basically soloing um, and it's it's sort of scatting but it's not scatting because what he's doing is approximating a trumpet as he's approximating a, uh, a, a drum kit um, and then of course there's the, har the harmonica the tried and true and uh, with a, one of those night braces um, you're you're good to go to work against basically your your drum kit this w looks great live. It's very, it's very interesting. It opens up possibilities for you. It also gives an, a listener um, a framework for, for rhythm um, so that they can actually groove, dance, um, and do a lot of the things that they're not normally expecting from an acoustic guitarist. Um, and, uh, and for me, Again, I use it as a writing tool. I like to keep it as simple as possible so that others can, uh, can work with, with this technique as well. Um, so, um, 